Over the last decade or so, there's been a major revolution of women's wrestling. From the top all the way down to the smallest indie, women are finding themselves in more prominent positions on the card than ever before. We're also seeing more acceptance of intergender matches and of women in hardcore matches. But of course, the road to acceptance is paved by hardship. Pioneers that refuse to conform to the norms and barriers placed in front of them. One of these women is someone I feel should be given most of the credit for today's women's wrestling scene, and that is Lufisto. For 25 years, Lufisto has evolved with, and in some cases, forced the evolution of North American pro wrestling. So, let's discuss this legendary trailblazer. Lufisto started wrestling in 1997 at the age of 17 in Quebec, making her way through various promotions in Canada and eventually the northeastern U.S., starting off as a valet and then finally wrestling as the ominous Lucifer. Dressed only in black, she came out to John Williams' Imperial March from Star Wars. Lufisto has previously stated that her wanting to portray this dark character came from her love of Star Wars' dark side, along with her own fascination with death. By 1999, she'd caught the eye of the legendary Jacques Rougeau in his promotion IW2000. Under this banner, she reverted back to her previous Precious Lucy name for the family-friendly promotion. She also quickly became disillusioned working for the Quebec legend as he didn't allow her to wrestle her way, instead wanting Lufisto to be more of a Miss Elizabeth archetype, more of a woman wrestler of the time. Jacques also didn't want her to work for other promoters while also working for him, a complaint that has also been made by Kevin Owens in the past. But since IW2000 wasn't running consistently, Lufisto moved on. Between 2000 and 2002, Lufisto would start to develop her own style and niche. She'd wrestle men more and more. Prominently, she would have matches with JC Owens and WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. In these bouts, Lufisto's style became stiffer and stiffer, her matches becoming more violent and more believable. 2002 was also the year Lufisto would challenge the system. She was set to wrestle Bill Scullion at a hardcore event in Ontario, Canada. The Ontario Athletic Commission stepped in and stopped the match from happening, citing Regulation 52, Part 4, Line 85 in the Athletics Act. No person shall hold a professional contest or exhibition of wrestling where male and female wrestlers are in the ring at the same time. Lufisto, who was almost exclusively wrestling men at the time, found herself essentially banned from Ontario. She was hurt and furious. Wrestling is a performance, and Lufisto felt that she had a right as a professional to work with whoever she wanted. She would appeal the regulation with the Ontario Human Rights Commission, but would be waiting until 2006 for it to finally be lifted. Lufisto in her hardcore anime days is a sight to behold. A woman barely five feet, taking it to men 6 foot 3, 250 pounds or more, swinging a weapon over her pigtails while blood covers her manga-inspired gear. Absolutely incredible. Lufisto would continue to work throughout North America, and in 2003 she would arrive for the first time in Japan, wrestling for Joshi promotion A to Z, formerly Arzion. While in Japan, Lufisto lived and trained in the Arzion Dojo alongside Sarah Del Rey. Being the only two North American women with the promotion, they bonded quickly. Lufisto described her time in the dojo as a mixed experience. She got to work on her technical wrestling while already good, she got better. But A to Z hadn't provided the dojo with food as promised, so Lufisto and Del Rey were forced to spend their meager earnings on meals. Her stint would come to an end after a nagging knee injury only got worse. Lufisto would spend the majority of 2004 rehabbing her knee and training students at the aptly named Torture Chamber, where she proudly trained people in the Japanese strong style tradition. We hit hard and nobody complains, she would say. By 2006, rehabbed and refocused, Lufisto was ready to break into the U.S. big, and she would do just that, wrestling for Shimmer and Combat Zone Wrestling. In fact, 2006 was a year filled with Lufisto making history. In August of that year, she would become the first woman to hold the CZW Ironman Championship when she defeated Kevin Steen. And in October, she competed in and won the first ever deathmatch tournament in Canada, defeating Necro Butcher in the finals. 
And in December, she ended the year by being the first woman to compete not just at the CZW Cage of Death event, but the first to compete in the Cage of Death match itself. Injury would again derail Lufisto's momentum when in January she would announce a tentative retirement due to an ongoing back issue. Thankfully, Lufisto would return in September of 2007 and in October would win IWA's Queen of the Deathmatch Tournament. Returning to Shimmer in 2008, Lufisto would have great matches up and down the card, and even challenge for the Shimmer Championship in a triple threat against Amazing Kong and champion Mischief. Over the next several years, Lufisto continued to push the boundaries of what women were allowed to do in wrestling. She continued to push herself in CZW and became the cornerstone for several women's promotions, including WSU, NCW Femme Fatales, Beyond Wrestling, Women's Wrestling Revolution, and Shine. And she also traveled the world some more, returning to Japan and wrestling throughout Europe and Mexico. By the mid-2010s, Lufisto again reinvented herself. This time, putting aside her hardcore tendencies, she focused more on being a powerhouse, tossing people around the ring like sacks of potatoes, but also stretching her opponents to their limits. Her matches became hard-hitting, strong-style affairs. She also became a mentor to a new generation of women, providing advice to anyone seeking her wisdom, learning from her successes and mistakes. A new generation continuing on the path paved by Lufisto whether it be her tag partner Jordan Grace wrestling men on television, or Kennedy Copeland and countless other women making their names in hardcore and deathmatch wrestling, Lufisto did it all before it was cool. And there's countless women's matches taking match of the night honors all over the independent scene. With wrestling booming in recent years thanks to the birth of AEW and the growth of the indie scene, Lufisto seemed on the short list to be able to contribute anywhere. But the 2020 pandemic shut down shows and travel for well over a year, keeping her out of the U.S. But in 2022, the Wounded Owl is back and ready to reclaim her spot at the top of the food chain. It's not too late for WWE, AEW, Impact, or anywhere else to pick up Lufisto, even for a short run. She seems to have plenty of gas left in the tank and a wealth of knowledge to share with these young rosters. And while scripting this video, it was announced Lufisto will be taking her rightful spot in the Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame presented by GCW an honor that is truly well-deserved. Congratulations on 25 years. I'm Scott from WrestleSpective. Thanks for watching.